Good morning, Vault 76. This is the Overseer. I hope you all enjoyed the party last night, even those who may have overindulged and overslept. But it's time to get up and get out there. We've been locked away long enough. Today is Reclamation Day. It may be time to leave, but I'll never forget the day you all entered Vault 76. You come from every walk of life, every race, color, and creed. But you all share one very important trait. You are this country's best and brightest. But more importantly, you'll always be my family. You have been tasked with nothing less than the rebuilding of America. Such a huge responsibility. Just know that vault -Tec is proud of you. I am proud of you. When you hear this, it means I've been gone for several hours. I've got my own mission out there in Appalachia. This is the Overseer, signing off. So the Overseer left the vault first, a couple of hours before we did. She said she has her own mission. What, a mission from vault Tech? Did they contact her? Or is this a mission that they gave her before closing the doors? We learn more when we access the Overseer's terminal here in Vault 76. There we find the Overseer's log, Vault 76. Alternatively, if we forgot to loot this holotape from the terminal before leaving, we can instead get it from Pentington, who's waiting for us outside. Oh, madam. I found this holotape on the Overseer's terminal. Gave a little listen. Seems you should meet her at her camp, just down the road. Overseer's log, or should I say, direct communication. Because whoever is listening to this had the moxie to try to find out where I've gone. But I'm glad you did. Truth is, I need your help. I've been given a task and I've decided to break protocol and tell you what it is. Because if there's one thing I've learned in these past few years, it's that we need to rely on each other. There were three active nuclear silos in Appalachia before the bombs fell. They blew up the world before. We can't let it happen again. So we've got to locate and secure all of the silos. Or die trying. Hopefully the former. But it's been 25 years. I just don't know what we're gonna find out there. Or where to start. My directive was to go to the nearest population center and assess the situation. I'll set up a camp on the way once I get my bearings. Find me there. So her mission from vault -Tec was to secure the three nuclear silos here in Appalachia. I'm amazed that vault -Tec thought that one person could do that, so it's probably a good thing that she asked for our help. She sounds so friendly, almost a motherly sort of figure. Does she know our character by name? I suppose she must if we've spent the past 25 years together. She said she was heading for a nearby population center. The first one we find is the town of Flatwoods. Here we discover the Overseer's camp by the road just outside. Overseer's log, south of Vault 76. I, I knew this wasn't going to be the Appalachia I remembered, but... Mutated animals? Haywire bots? No people so far. We have to be ready to rebuild in... What I can confirm is... Hostile territory. Fortunately, vault -Tec was prepared. You see this? The cooking station? The stash box? The workbenches? All built with the camp. You need a home base out there. The construction and assembly mobile platform is designed to give you one. Just add resources, planning, and a little elbow grease. 
When you move your camp, everything you've built is stored, ready to be placed back down in the new area. Use this to establish a foothold whenever you're in unfamiliar territory. I've left my camp behind so you can use it. I know I'm breaking my own advice by not taking it with me. But after seeing Appalachia for myself, I need to make sure every resident of 76 has a safe haven they can start from. I'll make do without it. If it's still standing, the town of Flatwoods is further down this road. Find me there. This is the Overseer, signing off. So everyone is dead, and vault didn't predict this. At least, if they did, they didn't tell our overseer. It came as a shock to her. She asked us to meet her in the nearby town of Flatwoods, but when we arrive, we don't find her. As she said, everyone is dead. But heading into the church, we find the next overseer cache on the other side of the door. Overseer's log, town of Flatwoods. My god. There's no one here. The old tavern, the church, people were using them for shelter, but they're gone. Mutations we expected. But there's something else. A disease. I was attacked by... Well, it used to be a person, but it had these green glowing lesions and its voice. Angry, tortured. We are one. On what? Whatever happened here is beyond anything we expected. And we expected a lot. Before they were wiped out, the survivors called themselves the Responders. Looks like they were made of firefighters, police, emergency medical staff. They even have an automated system to teach people about treating water, food, survival. I'm doing their tests, and you should too. I know it's even worse than we imagined, but someone's got to know where the missile silos are and how to secure them. The responders are the best lead we have. This is the Overseer, signing off. So everyone died to a new disease that turned them into the Scorched. As the Overseer said, these responders are the only lead we have, so we'll have to pick up whatever trail the responders can leave for us to find out exactly what happened here. While following the responders' trail, we stumble into the vault Tech Agricultural Research Center, just on the outskirts of town. Inside, we discover a holotape left by the Overseer, the Overseer's journal entry number one. Overseers, let's call these personal journals. Not an official log, just something for me. To the Agricultural Center, one of my first posts with Vault Tech. I was so excited because I used to come to this same farm when I was a kid. I remember one year at the Autumn Festival, me running through the corn maze going every which way, mom and dad yelling after me to slow down. <laughs> Wasn't gonna happen. I guess I was always hitting life fast. Couldn't just be a pioneer scout, I had to make troop leader. Couldn't just be a good student. I had to have straight A's. God, I miss those early days. Just being a kid, the three of us, our simple life, our simple house. I wonder if it's still standing. So the overseer was an overachiever, and she took a moment to reminisce about her past life. With this holotape, we begin a new quest, Personal Matters. We still have to follow the trail of the overseer, but by completing Personal Matters, we get to know more about the overseer as a human being. And so we'll head off that way first. In her holotape at the vault Tech Agricultural Center, she began reminiscing about home. We'll likely find her next entry if we head to her hometown of Sutton. In one of the ruined buildings, we find a bedroom covered in vault Tech posters. Here we find the Overseer's Journal, Entry 2. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I'm home. Sorry it's been so long, but I... I couldn't get away. 
I know neither of you is around to hear this, but I miss you. I miss watching Dad grade papers on the living room table. I miss the three of us huddled around the radio, listening to the silver shroud. Dad, you were right about what living underground would really be like. 25 years locked in with the same people was a challenge. But watching them pair up, get married, have children, well, I think I got to know a little bit of what you and Mom were always telling me. Well, since I'm doing this whole trip down memory lane, maybe a walk over to the old high school is in order. On the wall nearby, we find her diploma from Vault Tech University. The West Virginia School Board has awarded this diploma of Vault Tech University in testimony of its approbation of her exemplary deportment and having complied with the requirements of graduation. She has completed successfully the Nuclear Fusion course and has earned 56 points in the studies as indicated below. Here we find a bunch of handwritten subjects, which are kind of hard to read. General science, chemistry, nuclear fusion, and a whole bunch of stuff. But we begin to understand why vault had our overseer go hunt down these three nuclear silos. She had a degree in nuclear fusion. Perhaps she knew how to deactivate the nuclear devices in each silo. So our overseer is quite a well-educated individual. A hard worker and overachiever, but also sentimental. Instead of immediately starting on the task that vault Tech gave her, she took a trip down memory lane. And this trip next takes us to the nearby Morgantown High School. Inside, after evading or killing some ghouls, we find the Overseer's Journal Entry 3 on a coffee table next to a couch. Overseer's Personal Journal. I was in my junior year when I got the news that Mom died. Mining accident. Everyone in West Virginia has a story like that in the family. You just... You never think it's gonna be you. Dad was in pieces. I started living in the library more than before. And I was already there most days to begin with. And Evan... Oh God. Evan. Mom had introduced us just a few months before. Graduated a year ahead of me, just went right to work in the mines. So handsome. Oh, and those arms. What West Virginia girl could resist all that? I can't believe he stuck with me. After the funeral, I didn't want anyone around. But there he was, showing up in the library after his shift with a lunchbox for us to share. Every day. When the career fair came and I met the people from vault Tech, it was like a light turned on. Protecting families, protecting their future, protecting America. The first thing I did when I got the acceptance letter to vault Tech University was head over to Mom's grave with Dad. He was happy I was staying in West Virginia. So was I. So the overseer suffered personal tragedy before the bombs. Her mom died in a mining accident. But before she died, she introduced the overseer to Evan. Evan, who presumably became the love of her life. Through this tragedy, she made sense of the world by becoming inspired by vault Tech's mission. Or at least their propaganda. Rebuilding the world, saving America. Alluring promises to a girl who had already lost her mother. But this latest holotape gives us our next clue. She mentioned the career fair and being approached by a vault Tech representative, then being accepted to the university. So to find the next holotape, we head to vault Tech University. There, on top of a vault Tech crate, on a banister overlooking the lobby, we find the Overseer's Journal, entry number four. Overseer's Personal Journal. Four years of living, learning, and breathing vault Tech. Graduating with honors in the overseer track. Dad was so proud. He came out even though he was already so sick. I must have impressed the right people because I was offered the next available overseer slot. I had just graduated. It was supposed to take years. Maybe they knew the war was inevitable. 
When I learned that 76 was going to be built, I was so excited I jumped right out of my chair and did a dance around the living room. Appalachia would be safe no matter what happened. Evan chose that moment to propose, a lughead. He knew I wouldn't say no after hearing the news. He knew me better than anyone. Dad died a few months after Evan and I moved in together. He really wanted to walk me down the aisle. Well, I didn't really get to walk down there either, so... Uh, I think it's time I went home. I owe Evan that much. Why would vault Tech offer an overseer position to a brand new graduate of vault Tech University? Even our overseer here seemed surprised that such a thing would happen. Is it really because they knew that the war was inevitable? Or did they need someone so green as part of this vault Tech experiment? But tragically, we learn that even though the overseer got engaged, she was never able to marry Evan. Looks like her father died before she even entered the vault. At least she's had 25 years to come to terms with that loss. But whatever happened to Evan? She ended this holotape with our next clue. She moved in with Evan, Evan who was a miner and likely had a home in a mining town. And she said she thinks it's time that she went home. We discover her home while exploring the ruins of the mining town of Welch. This is one of the most ruined towns in the entire game. If we move towards one of the wrecked houses on the eastern side of the town, uphill from the town center, we find the overseer's house with a green propane tank just outside the kitchen door. Inside, we find the overseer's next personal journal lying on top of her overturned fridge. Overseer's personal journal. Vault 76 was built to take the best and the brightest. But that wasn't what all the vaults were for. The Societal Preservation Program. I wasn't supposed to know about it. But when I found out, Evan wanted me to tell the press, but I didn't. <sighs> yes, e experimenting on vault residents was ethically wrong, but the goal of finding the most suitable people to repopulate, to understand humanity pushed to the extremes, what if that was the only way for us to survive? We can't save everyone. That's what they always told us. And I thought, I still think, they were right. vault Tech found out that I knew. I thought I was going to be fired or arrested, but instead they confided in me. Vault 76 was going to be a control vault, no experiment. I was so relieved, but they told me I was going to be assigned to Vault 101 in Washington, D.C. I had to leave West Virginia, my people behind. I couldn't let them do that. No matter what it took. I'm so sorry, Evan. I wish I could say I would have made another choice. That I would have picked dying in this house together when the bombs fell. I never stopped thinking about you. And I'm not giving up until I find out what happened. If you're not here, then there's only one other place you'd want to be. The mines. So she knew. She knew about vault societal preservation program. She knew about the experiments vault was conducting on their own Vault residents. Did she know the specifics? Did she know about the annual murder of the Overseer at Vault 11? The secret cache of drugs hidden inside Vault 95, which itself was filled only by victims of drug abuse? Did she know about Vault 75, where the perfect human specimen was produced through selective breeding and hormone treatments, only for that test subject to be murdered at the age of 18? Did the Overseer know the details of all of these experiments? If so, how could she say that she was okay with it? That Vault Tech was right! We do learn something about her character, though. She was the original choice to be the Overseer of Vault 101. 
We recall from the events of Fallout 3 that the experiment at Vault 101 was to have an omnipotent overseer with absolute power to test the effects of a society ruled by that omnipotent overseer completely isolated from the outside world. She gave up absolute power so that she could stay in Appalachia, close to her people, close to her family. But I sense some hypocrisy on her part. She says that all of the evil experiments that vault Tech did were right. It was a necessary evil. But when given the opportunity to become the overseer of a control vault, which would have no experiments, she leapt at the opportunity. But she also made great sacrifices. When the bombs dropped, she raced off to Vault 76 to become Overseer and left Evan here. But we don't find Evan here, and the Overseer didn't find Evan here. So she went to the only other place where he would have been, the mines. While scouring the ash heap, we discover part six of the Overseer's personal journal near to the Rockhound Excavator. Overseer. Overseer's personal journal. I found him. Evan. He's down there. Just like I thought he'd be. But I... I didn't think he'd be one of those things. The green lesions on his face that... Oh, God. I did this to him. It's all my fault. They told me I could have Vault 76. But not if I was married. They would have had to give Evan a spousal exemption and give him space in the vault. But there was someone more qualified. A civil engineer, someone with the skills to help rebuild. He was a distant cousin of a vault tech executive and almost made the cut. 76 was for the best and brightest and Evan didn't qualify. Deep down, I knew they were right. So I broke off the engagement. I sacrificed him for the vault, for Appalachia. I know what I have to do, but, but I just can't. I love him. I already killed him once. I can't do it again. Please. I gave 76 everything. You were all so brilliant. The first few years were hard, but we learned to trust each other. You learned to trust me. I was young. So young. Younger than most of you. But you accepted me as your overseer. So I need you to do this for me. Let Evan rest. He didn't deserve any of this. The Scorched? Eliminating this plague? It's not just about survival now. It's personal. We have to secure the nukes. Wipe this disease off the map. She could have saved him. Had she kept her original job posting to become the overseer of Vault 101, she could have married Evan and Evan would have had a spousal exemption. She could have gone to Vault 101 with Evan, but instead she chose Vault 76. So strongly did she not want to leave her home. Even though she knew there was no room for Evan in Vault 76, he wasn't qualified. He wasn't one of Appalachia's best and brightest even though that meant she had to break off her engagement with him, even though that meant he would die in the bombs. But he didn't die. He was turned, and the Overseer didn't have it in her to kill him. And so she left it up to us. Using the warehouse basement key card we find right next to her holotape, we can head down the stairs and open the door. We find ourselves in a small little basement, a fusion generator at the bottom, some shelves nearby, and a barred door against the eastern wall. On the other side of the door is a scorched. So Evan didn't die in the bombs. He didn't turn into a ghoul from the radiation. He survived for years after the bombs dropped until being turned into a scorched after the scorched event. 
We've put Evan to rest, but the overseer, knowing what happened to her fiancé, is likely even more determined now than ever to fulfill her quest, the quest given to her by vault to secure all three nuclear silos. She now has a renewed sense of purpose, which we discover while following her trail. We discover many of the overseer's other messages while following the primary plot of the game. At Flatwoods, the Overseer said we should follow the trail of the responders. From Flatwoods, this leads us to the Morgantown Airport, where we find the next log near to the responders' terminal number three. Overseer's log, Morgantown. I used to love coming here on weekends, taking flight lessons. Now it feels like I walked into a nightmare. Those Scorch things are everywhere. I kept quiet. They didn't see me. I managed to observe them for a bit. Whatever this disease is, it seems to completely take over its host. The ones that used to be human, eventually they go rigid, like some kind of stasis. And if they stay like that for too long, they sort of burn up. From the inside out, Vesuvius in reverse. I wondered what could possibly cause all this. And then I got my answer. It swooped down from the sky, screeching, breathing, infecting everything. I don't know how to fight this. But we need to consider all our options. Even the nukes. We find the source of this scorched plague and wipe it from the map before it can leave Appalachia. But first things first, we can't let the disease spread to us. Looks like the responders were developing some kind of inoculation. I'm going to pick up their work. You should too. This is the Overseer. Signing off. So the petrified corpses we find all over Appalachia are really scorched victims who stayed in one spot for too long. Whatever scorch plague infected them burned them from the inside out, petrifying them. Perhaps this can explain why we see many scorched holding still motionless until they observe us and attack. Sounds like the Overseer thinks that nukes are on the table if they can be used to get rid of these scorched beasts. But first, the inoculation. While working with the responders for a scorched inoculation, we discover the next holotape at the Charleston Fire Department, which after the war was turned into a responder's base of operations. Overseer's Law, Charleston Fire Department. Automation used to define life in West Virginia. Now it's the only thing left. These training programs that the responders have set up. How many survivors were running through these? It takes a certain calling to voluntarily run into the middle of a fire. Rescue people. Please. Looks proceed like they kept up that spirit. Office for Even final. as the dangers changed. Registration. They must have fought the scorched up close more than anyone. I need to find out what they knew. We discover the next holotape while working with the Grafton mayor in Grafton. Looks like the overseer also worked with the mayor. We find her log in a cache nearby. Overseer's log, Grafton. The mayor of Grafton used to be the automated assistant, and it's gone completely mad. Still trying to run the town even holds elections for itself. We built these machines to do things without us, and they have. Might be useful if I played along. While following the trail of the responders at the fire department, we learned that the responders lieutenant in charge of the elite responders fighting team, the Fire Breathers, had discovered something he believed was a game changer in the fight against the Scorched. We learned during the quest that his last known location was a place called 
top of the world. When we head there, we are called to by a voice at top of the world who wants us to do her a favor. It seems the same voice reached out to the overseer, for we find her cash and her next journal right outside the top of the world elevator. Overseer's log, top of the world. There's someone in control of this old ski resort, and if I ever find her, I'm gonna wash her mouth out with the first thing vaguely resembling soap I can get my hands on. Ugh. Selfish, that's the word. Maybe that's why she's alone. Maybe that's why she survived. But the only way she'll tell me what she knows is if I help her first. All the good people I've learned about who've died and it's the sociopath who still gets to live. The game changer that the responders lieutenant named Hank Madigan had discovered were some depleted ultrasite laced munitions that could inflict heavy damage against the scorched. But he was killed by raiders at top of the world. But we learn from Rose that Madigan was working on a scorched detector uplink. After retrieving the uplink, we discover that it's damaged, but we learn that the free states hiding in the mire might have a way to fix it. Everything points towards Abby's bunker, but when we arrive, we find that the Overseer has beat us here. Overseer's log, Free State's bunker. Sam Blackwell and Raleigh Clay. Those damn traitors and their secessionists turned their backs on America to form their free states. Concrete bunkers. You'd never get that past a vault tech radiation proofing inspection, that's for sure. Sounds like they let go of their paranoia long enough to seek out help from the other survivors. Just have to hack this terminal, see what they left behind in there, and what they wanted to do. The Free States were working on scorched detectors. That's why they needed the uplink that Madigan from the Responders had. While repairing the scorched detectors, we find many references to the Brotherhood of Steel inside the Free States bunkers. While trying to find out what happened to them, we stumble upon the next Overseer cache at Camp Venture. Overseer's log, Camp Venture. Just who was this Brotherhood of Steel? Survivalists? Former army personnel, they, they took their training and their call signs seriously, that's for certain. Organized, efficient, access to hardware. You'd think they'd be ruling West Virginia by now, but they're gone. If they're following military logic, then they'll have a fortified headquarters somewhere and a leader, someone who knew what they were planning. The Overseer's intuition is accurate, for we discover the Brotherhood headquarters at nearby Fort Defiance, which was built inside an old insane asylum. Inside the asylum on the ground floor, we find the Overseer's next log. Overseer's log, Allegheny. A metal asylum as a last stand against the scorched. Brave, crazy, and crazy brave, the army way. At least I'm pretty sure the Brotherhood had former U.S. Army members, judging by the security systems. If only they had survived. What I wouldn't give to have a few of America's finest watching my back right now. As it is, I'll have to find out how they were planning to combat the Scorched on my own. Once I can figure out a way through these doors, we, too, have to figure out a way to get through those doors to bypass the Brotherhood security system. To do so, we have to become a member of the U.S. military, and to do that, we have to head over to Camp McClintock. We see that the Overseer had the same idea, for at Camp McClintock, we find the next holotape. Overseer's log. Camp McClintock. <sighs> Maybe I'm going crazy. But it was nice to put on the uniform and play pretend with a bunch of robot drill sergeants. I actually think I learned a thing or two about marksmanship. I wonder, now that I'm in the army, is my official title Overseer Private or Private Overseer? <laughs> oh, time to see if I can fool a few automated identification systems. <laughs> What, does that mean that her name is Overseer? 
Surely that's just her title. But that raises a good point. We don't know her actual name yet. She's just the overseer. But off she went to fool some automated identification systems, likely to do the same thing that we need to do to print a military ID. To do that, we have to head to the Charleston Capitol building and wait in line to get our ID printed. While we wait, we can listen to the next Overseer's Log. Overseer's Log, Charleston Capitol. If automation still rules West Virginia, then Charleston is the heart of the machine. Bureaucracy still pumping away without any people to serve. There's a lesson there somewhere. Dealing with these terminal systems like it's just a normal day in America is somewhere between disturbingly comforting and completely insane. But there's a lot of secrets in this old capital that we'll need to find. After uncovering a number of secrets, we get our official military ID printed. With this in hand, we can finally head back to Fort Defiance to access the restricted top floor. Once on the top floor, we find the Overseer's next log, Fort Defiance. Overseer's log, Fort Defiance. The more I travel this godforsaken wasteland, the more I realize what truly destroyed West Virginia and what destroyed any chance the survivors had of actually surviving. Distrust. All these divergent groups, responders, Brotherhood of Steel, whatever. Separately, they had everything necessary to beat the odds. Brains, brawn, and bravado to spare. And what did they do? Close ranks. Get paranoid. Refuse to work with one another. And it cost them all their lives. People of Vault 76, if you're listening, do not fall into the same trap. You find each other. You work with each other. Only together will you win. This is your overseer. And I'm begging you. Please, save our country. After this, we end up working with the Enclave. We don't know exactly what the Overseer did next, but we do know that she finally discovered the three nuclear silos. We find her next message outside the elevator to Site Alpha. Overseer's log, missile silo Alpha. No one's here. Not even any military survivors. Might be for the best. I don't think Vault Tech asserting jurisdiction over the nukes would have gone over well. But it also means I'm locked out. Access is restricted to the highest ranking officers. It's not going to be easy to fool. If we can't secure these sites, my God. The automated factory in the silo? Just how many nukes can it make? So the silos are equipped with factories run by robots that automatically create new nukes. She couldn't get into this silo, but she did track each one down. We find her next message outside the elevator leading to Site Bravo. Overseer's Law, Missile Silo Bravo. The security systems are still operational, just like at Site Alpha. My guess is that Site Charlie will be the same story. But I need to be sure. I still have no idea how I'm going to get the military credentials to gain access. My hope, my fear, is that some other group of survivors tried to figure this out as well. We'll just have to keep looking. And finally, she succeeded in finding Site Charlie. We find her next holotape right outside the elevator. Overseer's log, missile silo Charlie. I've now verified that all three missile silos still have fully operational security. No way inside yet, but I'll scour all of Appalachia if I have to. And it's here the Overseer's journey ends. Well, mostly, she never finds a way inside the nuclear silos. 
but we do. While working with the Enclave, we find a way inside. We can take control of the nukes and use them any way we wish. We can nuke fissure sites in an attempt to kill a Scorch Beast Queen and wipe them out. But if we take the nukes and we nuke other towns, other settlements, other survivors of Vault 76, then the Overseer appears to give us a lecture. We'll find a holotape sitting in an otherwise empty tray just inside the door near to the elevator of the silo used to nuke Appalachia. It could be A, B, or C. Here we'll find Overseer's Log, Nuke Launch. I had a directive from Vault Ensure the region's three nuclear missile silos. I... We had to make sure they didn't fall into the wrong hands. I knew I couldn't do it alone, so I asked you, my Vault 76 family, for help. And what did you do? My God, why? How could you do this? We were supposed to take control of the nukes, not engage in an Appalachian arms race. Please, stop this madness. The cycle of destruction has to stop! I... I haven't lost faith in you. I know you are good people and will do the right thing. If anything, I've... lost my faith in Bolt. They gave me a mission I could never accomplish on my own. They must have known I'd need your help. Did they also know what you do? so hard not to feel manipulated. And at last we understand. Vault 76 wasn't a control vault. It had an insidious experiment, like most of Vault Tech's vaults. Only this experiment wasn't divulged to the Overseer. She was the primary test subject. That's why they chose someone who was young, a recent college graduate. Someone who didn't have a whole bunch of real-world experience yet. Someone underqualified for the role of overseer. They put her in charge of what they said was a control vault, where she spent the next 25 years of her life getting to know each and every one of them on a personal basis. Until she thought of all of them as family. Until she trusted them implicitly. Vault-Tex experiment for Vault 76 was to see what would happen if 500 of America's best and brightest were released into a wasteland and given the task of hunting down pre-war American nuclear silos. To see what would happen if 500 of America's best and brightest could launch nukes. Could they use them? Would they use them? What would they nuke? Real threats or each other? vault may not be around anymore to discover the results of their experiment, but the Overseer is. And if we nuke any site except for a fissure site, the results are that even the best and brightest of America will wage nuclear war upon each other. That is the last we hear of the Overseer. Until we stumble upon the mountainside bed and breakfast, just north of Site Charlie, which means this was likely her last stop. She came here just after recording the holotape she left at Site Charlie. Overseer's log. Somewhere in the mountains. Oh. Not good. Not good. Not good. Just, just trying to not... Trying to focus. But the pain is unreal. So bad. I'm gonna do this now while I can. I'm, I'm, af I'm afraid I might pass out. I was attacked. Some kind of... I, I think it was wearing a gas mask. A, a, a heavy coat, but, but not human. Not human. No stim packs left. Funny joke in here about uh, practicing what you preach. This is this is uh, the overseer signing off. Hopefully, oh, not for the last time. I think we can assume she was attacked by a mole miner. 
Strange that she's just now discovering them. She should have seen a bunch of them while exploring the ash heap. I explored the mountainside bed and breakfast looking for her corpse. A skeleton, her vault suit, anything. But I didn't find it. This is the last we hear of the Vault 76 Overseer, and we never even learn her name. Did she die? Bleeding profusely and out of stem packs, how could she have survived? But we don't find a body. If she did survive, where did she go? Into the wasteland? Into a vault? We may never know, or perhaps we'll learn in an upcoming DLC. At any rate, that is the full story of Vault 76's Overseer, so far. What are your thoughts about her story? Do you think she made the right choice by choosing Vault 76 over Vault 101, and in so doing, dooming her fiancé to death after the bombs? Do you think it was morally repugnant of her to continue to work with vault Tech after discovering their horrible experiments? Even her fiancé, Evan, urged her to go to the press, but she refused. Do you think that she was right? That vault Tech's insidious experiments were for the greater good. And despite this, do you still empathize with her? With her losses, with her disappointment, and ultimately with the betrayal that we inflict upon her by nuking West Virginia? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you find that you're still not getting notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I manually update Twitter with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.